Hello there and welcome along to Hive Live Extra, your place for exclusive reaction and analysis following Watford's 3-2 victory over Aston Villa. Former Hornet striker Tommy Mooney with me once more. Not bad, eh? First really game back. Good. Really good atmosphere, performance, result. Everything was there today. Yeah, it certainly was. What was the best bit for you? Because this is it. I'm sitting here thinking now there's so many highlights we could pick out. But for you, I mean, the noise it had to be, eh? The, just the noises the players came onto the pitch and everything to do with Graham Taylor related yeah. on the on the scoreboard. It was just a, one of those days where everything came off and the the atmosphere, like I say, the performance was good. The the, the, N, the NHS um, mm. lap of honour at half time was was absolutely brilliant. It was just one of those days where almost nothing went wrong. I hope there's loads more of those yeah, days. Yeah, <laughs> certainly so. I hope you haven't peaked too early. Um, the moment though those players came out having done 50 commentaries last year with an empty stadium and those celebrations when there were no fans here inside to enjoy it it was pretty spectacular wasn't it i'm sure the yeah. hairs went up in the back of your neck it, cer it certainly was and i've said many times i'm not sure how those players got through what they had to because it would have been very d difficult for me um, but today they, they were certainly rewarded with that almost a full house there was very few empty seats and it, they started ever so well you know, you expect Villa to take the game to Watford and it was it was role reversal, really. We were comfortably in control for the whole of the first half. Yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll talk about it in more depth, but just very briefly, did Villa surprise you a little bit? Did you expect a bit more of them? Well, we said beforehand, it's how they react to not having Grealish in the team. And today they really struggled with it because he'd be their go-to guy, give him the ball and he'll draw attention from defenders, which gets somebody else in the team some space. They didn't have that today. They didn't have an outlet and they couldn't cope with our attacking pace. Um, and that was really their downfall today. Uh, many very impressive individual performances we're going to be talking about from the Watford players out there today. Also talking about where it went wrong for Aston Villa as well. But first, let's take a look at the highlights. All sorts of space again for Ismail Assar. With Dennis in the middle, gets another goal and scores! Just listen to the roar. We come for Buendia. Didn't quite reach Ings. Saar with the touch. And it's inviting here for Dennis. Saar's continued his run in all sorts of space and gets it. Ismail Saar deflected and in. And Watford double their lead. The frustration all too obvious for Aston Villa right now. Kuchka was in full flight. The referee is content to let it go, though, because Watford still have it with Kucho. He's straight into the thick of things. Oh! It's been four years in the making, but it is a stunning introduction to English football. Leon Bailey for Aston Villa. And there's the chance. There is the finish. Brilliant finish from John McGinn. And the response is swift. This might not quite be done yet. Traore, Messina left his leg out, did he surely? The referee took a long look at it and points to the penalty spot. Danny Ings delivers from the spot and reduces the deficit, but there are only seconds remaining at Vicarage Road. Villa have come back from three behind. The Watford lead is 3-2. Well, there has been spirit showed by Smith's side in trying to salvage this, but they've come up just short. Watford return with a win. Not quite as straightforward as it looked like being, but the Hornets have all three points on opening day. I think a few of us are going to be watching those highlights on repeat this weekend. Right from the word go, Tommy, especially the way that Saar was linking up with Emmanuel Dennis. It was impressive, wasn't it? Really, uh, I was really pleased, but... Um... It's just the way they took the tempo of the game and, and, and took hold of it. They had possession of the ball, comfortable in possession. Every time they had it, they tried to do something with it and going forward. And like you say, the link-up play between Dennis and Saar was undefendable at times. Certainly Mings and, and Target, they were both lucky, lucky to stay on the pitch till half-time and then Target left at half-time and you thought he'd probably got away with it. But they, they were so dominant, the, the pair of them. But I think 
cleverly in midfield, gave them options and gave them time to get into positions to, to, to use those link moments in the passing. So all throughout, it was a really, really impressive performance in the first half. Just how much of an asset, though, do you think Dennis could be? Well, he certainly doesn't give anybody a rest, does he? No. Because all over the pitch. But he, he did things that, that surprised me. When you're coming forward to the ball as a, as a striker and you've got a defender behind you, it's really difficult to, difficult to control the ball and keep tight control of it. He was doing that. And then at times he was playing one-touch passes to Saar, back into midfielders. He was, he was very accomplished. And, you know, he got tired towards the end. He took a couple of knocks. Uh, but got his goal and you know it's amazing how much more energy you get after yeah. you score a goal and he certainly that got him to half time without a doubt yeah and then Saar got his goal perhaps we were a little bit of luck he had a bit of luck on our side today yeah but I always say you earn your luck because of the things that you do before that so yes it was fortunate and he probably had a, a, another opportunity as well that was arguably better chance than that um, which he just scuffed but yeah again that link up play down the right hand side and then on occasion not as frequent as the right side, but on occasion on the left hand side, Semmer was in behind. You know, Konza should have been yellow carded for a tackle on Semmer. He'd have been right in behind through on the goalkeeper. So all over the pitch. But for me, I think the key to it, I know we talk about Dennis and Saar. The key to it for me was the midfield three. I thought Atebo, um, Kuchka and, and Cleverly were exceptional in, in the middle of the pitch, both in and out of possession. because. Yeah. They, they were harassing the, the Villa midfielders and John McGinn's a player that I've, I've, I've worked with. I know how good he is. And because of the pressure they put on him, he was he was struggling to get in the game and make an impact in the game. Albeit he scored a fabulous goal later on. But in the first half, it was almost like the game was, was killed by half time by us getting that second goal. Uh, with the midfield as well, when you think how little time that, that they've had to play together and their relative inexperience of the Premier League. It gets you excited about what's to come when they really do settle. Definitely. And even going back to the, the Palace game last Saturday, the three of them never played together at any point because they replaced each other. Yeah. So I, I think combinations and, and, and teamwork come with time. They've started off on the front foot and they looked fabulous today. So hopefully with more time on the training ground that the Premier League allows you because there's very few midweek games. Mm. So that can um, flourish into a, a great midfield three. Yeah. And then, you know, to have those cards up our sleeve like Cucho Hernandez. We said earlier, didn't we? When you've waited that long for your opportunity at a football club, sometimes it could go one or two ways, really. Either it really gets to you mentally or you seize that opportunity. And he did the latter, didn't he? Well, <laughs> funny enough, I think he's waited four years for his debut. Yeah. And then within 30 seconds of it, he scores a goal like that. He's, he's... As a striker, though, how much do you appreciate, you know, how difficult would that have been on your first touch almost to have done that? Yeah, I think what makes it harder is the fact that he's been a Watford player. So the supporters have gone from who to who is that? Yeah. Because it, the talent that he showed, he had no real other options. And to cut inside, it's a really tough skill to do to get that. It had to be immaculate to beat Martinez. So to do that, and then you see his face as he's running off. <laughs> After a performance where I probably watched him for an hour last week at Crystal Palace, and he was a threat, a real threat very similar to the way Dennis played as the nine today. He was like that last week. And then when Troy Deeney came on, he was happy to go on the left-hand side. Mm. So those combinations, again, I think are, they're, they're a threat. And you add that to, you know, Deeney, Fletcher, King, we've got some real attacking threats. My concern would be how we defend, but today they were accomplished against Danny Ings. And let's be honest, Danny Ings has been one of the best strikers in the Premier League yeah. for the last three or four years. It's true. And actually, John McGinn's goal, it was very well taken, wasn't it? That was a moment of quality. Perhaps a little bit sloppy with the penalty and just made things a little bit uncomfortable when they didn't need to be. I think we just got tired and nervous. Yeah. And sometimes that's it can be expected. It's how you deal with it. We talked previously about how disjointed everybody's pre-season has been. So it's going to take four, it's normally four games. It could take four to six games before you get your fitness. And to cope with that heat today as well, in amongst the pressure and the stress of the, the first time they've played in, front, in, a, in a full stadium for what, 18 months. So you add all of those things, you, it's understandable to get nervous and a little bit edgy towards the end. I think Messina was lucky that he never gave away a second penalty because yeah. I, my heart was in my mouth yeah. a little bit and I did close my eyes. <laughs> you and 20,000 others, yeah. <laughs> I did close my eyes. I was almost half hoping the, mic, the, the earphones would go over my eyes instead. I was like, oh no, is he give it? Um, but 
he, he, you know, he had the, the the peace of mind to pull out of the tackle, and it was clear that it, there was no contact. So, yeah, it was nervy, but I think that'll do him good to hold on to the lead. Yeah. You know, every, they'd have loved a clean sheet. Daniel Backman will tell you, want a clean sheet in every game. Uh, but to hold on to the lead the way that they did will give them confidence again approaching the last 10 minutes of a game mm. with a one or two goal lead. Well, time to get some exclusive reaction now here on Hive Live Extra. We can hear from one of the key men involved. Well, Peter, that was your first experience of football here at Vicarage Road. Couldn't have gone much better than that, could it? Uh... Yeah, yeah, to be honest, uh, you know, this is the start of the season. Uh, so I'm happy that uh, we got the win. Congratulations to my teammates. But, you know, it's a long season, so step by step, you know, we just have to keep going like this. The fans were back, obviously, today for the first time in, in a year and a half. Just just what did that mean to have them cheering you on? Uh, to be honest, it's a, trin it's a thing of joy because, you know, one and a half years, going to two years with no fans, it's like, you know, with tr in this training session without the fans. But, uh, you know, when they are in the stadium, they lift up the team, so you can see it's amazing. And then, uh, once again, congratulations to them. Thank them for the support. Uh, I, keep, I pray that we should keep going like this. You obviously set the tone from very early on and scored a goal early in the game. How much of a difference did that make to the pattern of play? Well, it's very important, you know, as a team, when you score first and when you get an early goal, it motivates everyone, you know? Like, it keeps the positive vibe going, everyone needs to keep pushing and I'm happy for my Nigerian brother and then Sa as well. So uh, congratulations to everyone. Congratulations for Dennis for the early goal. And well, it was a good assist from Sa. So it was good we scored early though because you know we were able to manage the game. When you score early, it's very important as a team. Dennis and Sa linked up excellently today, didn't they? How exciting could those two be? Well, to be honest, uh, they did well. And you can see they've got good pace. They, they run forward, they are like direct players. Uh, I hope that uh, they continue like this to the end of the season. But again, when it comes to situations like this, it just has to do with like you know the team. You know, it has to do from the goalkeeper to the forward. And it was brilliant today, though. I really recommend them. I really appreciate them for their support. Uh, congratulations to them once again for the both of them for the goal they scored. So I'm happy for them. And lots of other attacking options here as well. You've got had Troy and uh, Ashley Fetcher on the bench today. Uh, the likes of Jao Pedro and Joshua King not available. It looks like it could be an exciting season. Yeah, like I said, this is just the beginning. So it's a teamwork though. Like the gaffer said, he needs everyone. And then, uh, you know, Troy is the captain. He's been here. Everyone respects him. Uh, he always encourages the lads that, uh, you know, everyone needs to stay together. Everyone needs to be positive. So we've got a few forwards that uh, they were not in the, the lineup because of injury or something but uh, once again it's a teamwork so there's a lot of games to be played you know so we can use this one just to justify the end it's just one game we have like many lots of games to go there are a lot of the kind of so-called experts out there predicting a difficult season for Watford this year do you think you might have surprised a few people today well Whatever people are going to say, whatever predictions they're going to make, it's a football game. You can never predict anything. So it's a long season, like I said. Uh, the most important of all is for us to stay positive, stay as a team. Because I know one thing, when you stay as a team, it's very difficult to break that team. So it's just for us to make sure that you know we are positive. We, we've got these good vibes in and out of the dressing room. Everyone needs to work for each other and leave the rest. Well, I said at the top of the show, Tommy, there's so many highlights today, weren't there? But I think one of them right at the end when Cisco finally had his moment where he could connect with the fans and applaud them for their input today and that noise. Yeah, it was great for him. And you could see, we've seen him several times, didn't we, in the studio last season, smiling all of the time when they win games. So you, you can't even imagine what he was feeling today. I think the, the ovation that he got before the game was for what he achieved last season with with a, a good strong group of boys he's probably had six weeks of, of a pre-season where he's trying to get to know the new players and adapt and also for him it's his first time in the Premier League his first experience of the Premier League so for him to get that result in the way that he was today his character shone through and I thought it was great at the end yeah. I think he had to be almost pushed into it <laughs> but nevertheless I'm glad he did and, and the supporters were fabulous throughout. Yeah, hopefully plenty more uh, where that came from when we're back here. It's not for a little while though in the Premier League, I think 11th of September, uh, our next Premier League fixture. In the meantime though, it's a trip to Brighton 
uh, that away. It's actually, interestingly today, across the Premier League, I think there was only um, one home defeat. All the other teams across the weekend so far at this point in recording have won at home. So it goes to show, doesn't it, perhaps we were quite fortunate to have that first home game. Yeah, I think so. And you could see the feeling and the atmosphere before the game here. I'm sure that was throughout the country. And, and certainly it does give you that advantage. When you've not had it for 18 mm. months, you really feel it. And uh, you, everybody in the stadium could feel the atmosphere today because we'd all been longing for it for so long. No different for the players. And it doesn't surprise me that the results have gone that way. Still, they'll go to, to Brighton now. They've won today, yes. But our side with confidence after a performance like that. Yeah, but we'll take a fair few fans down there as well and, yeah. and make our voices heard. So, yeah, I think after a performance like that, in your first game of the season, it just it, it just enhances your, your confidence levels. Um, and they've got another week on the training pitch. So, you know, that system and the shape, it was structured today for probably 70 minutes. Well, a week on the training ground can make sure that that gets to 80 and 90. Mm. All right, well, we'll leave it there uh, with you, Tommy. We look forward to uh, bringing you Hive Live next weekend when we are away at Brighton. But for now, the season is underway. We look forward to enjoying it together. And what a start that was. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Click below to subscribe.